Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers. Matthew here. So, whew, today we are going to take a little bit of a look here at lists and what lists are good for and uh, kind of pull some of that apart. Now, this is kind of a part of the broader kind of thing that is data structures here in Touch Designer. And data structures are really important for us. In fact, they're one of the most important things that we kind of wrestle with, deal with, confront, hold on to, and work with all the time. And there are lots of different structures for data, but lists are one of the fundamental ones that we come back to time and time and time again. Uh, and there's something that uh, occur in Python a whole lot, and we're going to kind of dig into what those are a little bit. Okay, so let's get started, right? Let's just like dig right in. We're going to add a text stat here, and we're just going to look at what even a list is, right? So let's, let's figure, figure that out. Uh, Kitty, kitty, kitties, uh, Maddie's, Reagan's, uh, my first list. How about that? That's great. Uh, and you know me, I love me some comments, so we're just going to go ahead and define some variables. There I am. Great. So a list is a sequential series of values, right? And these values might be numbers, they might be um, strings, right? They could be integers, floats, strings, bools. Uh, they could actually be other lists. Like, it's uh, a series of things, right? And that, yeah, what do we mean by that, right? And, like, that's hard, because a list, uh, just like lists that we make in life, are a series of things. So if we were to make a grocery list, for example, we might have eggs, uh, we might have milk in here, uh, we might have bread, we might have butter, right? Uh, we might have coffee, because Lord knows we can't live without coffee. Now, looking at this list, we can see that the structure of this is that our items are separated by commas. They live inside of square brackets. And in this case, my strings are enclosed inside of some form of quotation mark or tick mark. All right? I could use doubles or singles. I just happen to use singles this time around. So what happens if we print out this list? So let's print out my first list. All right? If we print this out, we're going to see, ah, there's my list, enclosed in brackets and all of the items inside of it. Well, that, that seems pretty straightforward, but what if I wanted just one particular item in my list? Well, we can access a single item in our list by uh, pointing to that particular item's index. Now, our index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and so on, and so on, right? Our index our index value starts at zero. So if we wanted to see our eggs here, for example, we would need to indicate that zero was the index that we wanted. Now if we run that, okay. So let's go ahead and practice some things so that we can actually understand what that means. So, right, so we might print out something uh, akin to Da, 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 da. Uh, the item in the zero position of my list is dollar sign $R, right? Looks familiar. Dollar sign, percentage sign. I don't know why I want to call that dollar sign. That's just so silly. Okay, percentage sign. And we'll just go ahead and make a bunch of copies of that because we know that we're going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, <sighs> great, and if we print this out, okay, the item in the 0 position is eggs, and the 1 position is milk, and the 2 position is bread, and the 3 position is butter, 4th position is coffee, which I misspelled. Oopsie doodles. Coffee. Excellent. Let's make sure that we can 
lovely. So we can begin to see a little bit of what's going on here, right? So our list is a sequence of things and we can get access to that sequence of things by using the index. Okay, well, so what? Well, we can do a few other things as well. We also um, are able to do something like this. We could look at the length of my list by using len. So let's print, print out the length of my first list. And we should see, whoops, print, print len, my first list. What did I get wrong here? Invalid syntax. I'm missing a close mark there. There we go. Aha, so there are five items in this list. Okay, it's pretty swanky, I like that. That's really useful. Um, so what else could we do, right? Um, we might think about the fact that uh, we could take this thing and we might decide that, you know what, rather than all this like printing shenanigans, we could say something like, this um, item one is my first list zero. Okay, right? So we could actually uh, take an item from our list and assign it as a variable, right? Like, let's see what that looks like. Let's print out item one. What happens if we do that? Oops, he's got swap seed. Sorry about that, everybody. All right, okay, well then, eggs, that is correct. Okay, that's good to know. It's good to know that I can actually take an item uh, or take something that's inside of my list and um, make that a variable, right? So item one is actually this thing. Okay, that's... That's pretty great, all right. Well, I'm, you know, that's pretty okay. I like that so far. Um, we can also, right, let's look at another list, another type of list. Edit the contents. In this case, if we um, have an, a list of integers, right, um, one, Two, three, four, five. We could print out the sum of my int list. All right, so we can also do some mathematic operations. That's great. That's really helpful. We can also um, do a few other things that are pretty swanky. Right, so let's, uh, let's go back for one second to what was going on earlier. So let's look at printing a portion of our list, right? And we can use our, we can use this colon here as a way to indicate that we want some items that are, um, uh, well, the, let's do it and then we're gonna talk about it. So let's do colon one. Okay, what does that give us? One. Okay. Pfft, big deal, Matt. Okay, well, what if we did colon two? Right? Let's try that. Okay, and that's a little bit better. Uh, I'm seeing what you're, what you're cooking. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down there. Snarky McSnarkers. One, two, three. All right, so this is letting us pull out just the first three, three things in our list. And in this case, by putting the number after the colon, it means we start at the front of the list and move forward. Okay, so let's make a note. Start at the front of the list. What about if we start at the back of the list? Can we do that? And in fact, we can if we put the three on the other side of the colon. So now what we should see is one, two, three, 
five four. Okay. All right, not bad, not bad. What if we did two instead? Okay. Right, one. That's all the things. Right, so this is indicating the position that we're going back to. Right, so we're starting, we want everything at the back, but we want to go all the way to the one position in the list, right, which is two. If we were to put zero in here as our index, then we would get the whole list. Da -da -da -da. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. If that doesn't make sense, I encourage you to practice that a little bit more, right? Because essentially this is allowing us to pick items from the front of the list or the back of the list to a particular index, right? So for example, to say that another way, I only want items that go to the four, for everything from the back to the fourth index. Zero, one, two, three, four. So I'm only going to get the value five. Okay. What if I want the last two numbers in the list? Right? Okay, well, in that case, I want to do three. Okay. Now this presumes that I know the length of the list. What if I just did this instead? What does that do? Okay, well, blah, that's not exactly what I want. Uh, blah, right? What if we did the length of my int list? Now, zero is a number, so I've got to do minus one. Or we have to account for the fact that there is that we get the zero is a value also. So maybe I want the last two numbers in my list. Let's see if this works. Ooh, that gave us the last three. The last two. Okay. And that should mean that no matter how long our list gets. That'll still work. Let's find out. Oh, ha, ha Sure is shooting, Tex. All right. So there are lots of ways that we can kind of get at that, right? And we, there's another way we could probably get to there, too. But for right now, uh, let's kind of, let's leave that as, as is. Okay. Well, what else can we do with a list? Well, what if I want to just make a list, right? Well, we can certainly do that. Right, we can make ourselves an empty list. And how do I stick things in there? Well, I can append. So my list.append, and I'm gonna stick the value that I want to append, or the thing that I want to put in my list, right in here. And let's print out my list, just to make sure that I did that right. Aha, okay, well, well, let's do that again, right? We're just going to repeat the same whole step. And I'm going to put in here uh, apple. Okay. Now what? Okay. All right. What if I want to do a bunch of things all at once? Well, in that case, I can use something called extend. And when I extend a list, I have to give it a list of things to... Oops. Kiwi 10. And then let's print my list one more time. All right, and now I've added all those things to my list in one go. Now that's not the only thing we can do, right? If we wanted to be really crazy, we could make a list of lists. So my list of lists is going to be a list, and then it's going to contain lists 
as the items inside. Uh, okay, like why would I ever, ever want to do that? Well, let's imagine that we've got a grocery store. In our grocery store, we have a few different departments. Uh, so like, let's look at uh, maybe like produce, right? So in produce, we've got uh, fruit. And in this case, we're going to use the first item in the list as our header, right? So we've got fruit, and uh, that means that we've got some apples. We've got some kiwis, some kiwi, and we've got oranges. Okay. What else do we have? Well, we happen uh, to have baked goods. And this grocery store also. Now our list is going to start to get a little unwieldy, right? We got bread. Oh my god, and now am I ever going to like keep track of what is going on here? This is like, oh no, I've got pies. Oh, I don't like this. Right, and hopefully you don't like it either. Uh, because this is going to be really hard to read. So if we don't want to do this, and we're not obligated to do this, we can actually do like a little bit of um, breaking here, right? We could use some indents to help us figure out what on earth is going on. Because we're, Python is um, pretty generous with how it treats white space, that affords us the ability to do some of this spacing uh, without any kind of fear of strange things happening, for the most part. There are some exceptions. Uh, and maybe we've got uh, a drinks section here in the store also, and that's uh, Coke and Sprite. and uh, root beer. Okay, let's save that. And you know what, let's go ahead and print out my list of lists, just to see if we got everything right here. Aha, all right. So that's, that is a list of lists. Okay, now, what, how, oh, oh gosh, okay. Well, well, how might we think about using that in some way that wasn't so hideous? Well, uh, let's look at how we can treat this in a different way, right? So instead, maybe we want to find just like a single list, right? So we could print out just um, my list of lists, right? We could see just one of those things. Okay, so that's just one list. That's not bad. Uh, if we wanted to, we could also, because we, we planned ahead, right? So this happened to be a kind of category, fruit, baked goods, drinks. So we could do something like uh, use a header, right? So in, we're gonna print out in the uh, percentage S depart department um, we have uh, what we've got an inventory we have an inventory uh, have an inventory yep okay and uh, let's see here, we're gonna do this. First thing we wanna know is my list of lists. First thing we're gonna pull out is the first item in the list, right? We happen to know that that is going to uh, give us this thing. Okay, well, what if I want just this thing in the list? Okay, well, it's still a list that I get back. So I can use another index value. So in the, right? In the fruit department, we have an inventory of, okay, what do we have an inventory of? Well, 
Now we're going to print out the next pieces of our uh, list, right? So we're going to use list of lists. Now we learned this trick already. We want the first list, right? And we happen to want all of the things after one. Okay, so what does this give us? Aha! So we see that in the fruit department, we have an inventory of apples, kiwi, orange. Right, and if we were to pull that all apart, again, what's going on here is the first thing that we're doing is that we're pulling out our header. We happen to know our header is in this first place. And then we're pulling out all the contents of the list, ignoring the index value that's in the front, or starting at one and going all the way to the end. Let's, let's take a, a hot second to like review something else here, right? So let's take this. We're going to comment this out for one moment so that we don't see it. And let's see if we can just get fruit, right? So I just want to print out this thing. How do I get there? So my list of lists, zero is the first list, right? And then in that, zero is the first item. Let's see what that does. Aha, fruit. And in fact, we'll clear that. Let's run that again. Okay. What if we want apple? Right? Do we want apple? Fruit, apples. Okay. What if I only wanted the first things, right? Only these things in zero. Okay. We could do that. We've got three lists in here, right? Fruit, baked goods, drinks. That's zero, one, and two. We could print out just those things. Okay. We could do something like this as well. Look at zero. And we could look at one, right? We know there's one, two, three. One, two, three. In uh, baked goods, there's one, or zero, one, two, three again. Right, so hopefully this is beginning to make a little bit of sense. And then drinks, zero, one, two, three again. Right, it's almost as if this were a kind of table. Right? In fact, if we were to think of it as a table, which wouldn't be a bad way to think of it, Right, we've got exact dimensions. Now, let's look back at our list. Let's look at our coordinates. Zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero. Right, rows and then columns. So that would be zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero. Right, this might be something like fruit, baked goods, Drinks. Right, the important thing here, right, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. Apples, kiwi, <laughs> ki, ki, kiwi, orange. Right, the important thing here is to understand that really our list. In this case, our list of lists is just another way of organizing information. We're really just, we've got index values that we're using to access our contents. And here, right, this is almost a coordinate system that we're really thinking about. Now, if we wanted to be really crazy, we could have a list of list of lists, or a list of list of lists of lists, right? Like, it can go, it can be nested forever and ever and ever and ever uh, and make a big old nightmare for us. 
And there are probably better ways for us to approach some of that data structuring. The more important thing for us to kind of hold on to is the fact that when we're looking at lists, uh, we can start to think about how we access their contents, especially by understanding the syntax of how we extract information from them. So that's a kind of first step, kind of how we think about lists and understanding lists in Python. And what we're going to look at next is we're going to look at how that kind of collides with our operators and why we care. Because boy, golly, it feels like we shouldn't care yet. But I promise we care about this a whole, whole lot.